to italy that's exactly what happened to us we our flight was landing late Mm -hmm. so i don't even remember it like fog or nonsense and it was like across the airport we weren't super far but far enough where you still and i think it was minneapolis or some nonsense like that i don't remember at any rate we're running 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 and like no newark it was newark airport because we weren't flying delta it was newark airport and we're like fucking like i'm having like i have um i get uh asthma yeah oh yeah like yeah. pretty bad like if i like exercise induced asthma really bad and i'm literally like heaving not getting breath, almost about to puke poor chris is running behind me like we see this like cart of people like driving by and we're like, oh my God, can we please jump on? We're going to miss our flight. And they let us jump on. They're like, come on. Bless. So we jumped on with them. They dropped us off. And we're like, oh my God, thank you. <laughs> we're, Honestly. They were like literally calling our names and like we're about to shut the that door. It makes my pit sweat oh, to dude, think about. Was, and then I went to the bathroom because so I was like, I thought I was going to vomit. Like I was, couldn't get a breath. And oh, have you ever life. vomited on? in an airplane Ugh. i have and it is the unpleasant Can't I, do that. I don't like no. to use the bathroom on an no. airplane period no. No. like i have oh. probably almost broke my bladder holding it on a plane because i'm like i don't yeah. want to i just don't i don't I don't want to um and you but one time <laughs> anthony gave me a muscle relaxer on a plane <sighs> i don't even remember why <laughs> but it made me so sick Ooh, i had like oh, chills no. i was like sweating and Ooh. like i felt so nauseous that i had to get up i threw up Mm-mm. on the plane in the bathroom oh and I, it was Oof. horrifying please tell me you stood while you did it because you can't get on your knees on that oh floor, god so. no i mean yeah it was like a it was like a you're bent over but you can't even bend over that far because there's not space yeah and where you put your hands oh i, I mean, <gasps> am a tall yeah for a female so Airport chairs feel mm-hmm. like Spanish Inquisition torture <laughs> devices mm-hmm. to me. Mm-hmm. There is absolutely no position that is comfortable for more than 10 minutes. So I am the worst person to sit next to on a plane because I am massively uncomfortable and I'm just struggling to find a place to put all the limbs yeah. that I have. Well, those seats yeah. are ridiculously you the small feet? too. They Where, they really are. Girl. And and like my ex-boyfriend was 6 foot 7 and we flew oh. Allegiant. Mm. And you know, like those seats are like it's like 12 inches of space between oh. you and the seat in it's front of you. It's so fucked up. It's it really so small. Is fucked up. I it, remember looking cuz you know, I sat down. I'm not a big person and like I sat down once in an airplane and like my when you sit down your fly, your if you got if you got large thighs, your thighs expand when yeah. you sit. And I sat down and I looked down and there was maybe I don't know, like an inch and a half on either side like uh, before like uh, in the seat. Oh, um, you get, so, you get to see the seat when your legs are flat? <laughs> That's cute. <laughs> But I, but it just I'm made all me grown think up I these was just size. like what how like who who is this made for? It's it's Only made you. it's made <laughs> for eat the rich. It's made mm. to shove as many people as you can as uncomfortably as you can. And see, I'm I'm old enough to remember my when my mom would like fly places that we used to be able to take her right to her fucking oh, yeah. gate. That it was no, that's like nine eleven. That man. it was yeah. that it was very much like. It was just starting to become like a, an Airbus. Do you know what I mean? Yes. Where there's still like a tinge of dignity. Dignity. Yeah. 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 Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. yes. Yeah. Being in the airport, I I literally think the only thing worse than the airport in my mind is like the DMV. Oh yeah. But oh. DMV is worse. Yeah. It's so 
awful. Yeah. Like the whole experience. And the when we dress, especially if you're yes. going without like the, any oh. status or if you're just, yeah. I mean, yeah. like honestly, and everybody's like, how do you feel about not traveling so much? I'm like, it, it's a double edge for me. I love actually, I'm loving being able to be home and coming home at the end of the night. Like no, I'm loving this. There, you but were ballers. I was, I was were. baller status. I had all priority those upgrades. Access. I got those priority mm-hmm. access. I got that. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, if you're going through as, yeah. as a full peasant, as, yeah. as I travel. Um, I can't live that life. It, if I got stuck in steerage, I was not girl, having a good the, day. The last two times I flew, I was going home to visit my family and I was working from home, but I also needed my personal computer. So I had two laptops. Oh, how dare you? Uh, and going through, let me tell you, the mental mm. gymnastics I had to go <laughs> through to try. I, I feel like I was that like blonde lady doing math yes where i was like okay how am i gonna get through security you have eight million of those little plastic things because each laptop has to be in its own thing so you're having to pull those out and then and then the person behind you is like staring you down like when uh you're done uh uh-huh chop chop because they're trying to get you gotta reload that shit yeah and you gotta take off your shoes Mm -hmm. and you gotta get those on you gotta get your jacket on you gotta make sure your your pockets are empty Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. like it the the amount of the, I would sweat so much just mm-hmm. going through the security line because I was just like I'd like unzip my boots before I got yep. over there take off my jacket before mm-hmm. I got up there yeah take, I, I kept both of my laptops in my purse so that I could pull them out easily mm-hmm. oh god just nightmare status girl I'm gonna tell you right now see if you get this job where you're gonna be traveling, mm-hmm. we'll have a chitty chitty chat chat. Yeah, about I all need to know because I get scoop. so there's anxious ways you can do it. crowds. Yeah. Crowds there's- make me very very nervous. And here's the other thing: when I when I did travel internationally, um, here's something I have a problem with. Okay, there is no reason there should not be a motherfucking bar. <laughs> In an international terminal. I mean, yeah, I I mean, what the fuck? (laughs) Charles de Gaulle Airport does not have one. No, they have a newsstand. You can buy a Diet Coke if you want. But I'm like, if I'm staring down the barrel of a fucking 12 hour flight, I'm going to need no something the, stronger the thing is, wait I, I am so confused by this you're telling me i've I'd never gone into charles gall because we didn't just kidding we did fly in there but we it was just flying in from florence so it was a small short trip and it was you know so but when we didn't spend time at the airport is my point no the international terminal that i was in for charles de gall did not have a bar I'm I, shook. I do not fly Searched. internationally or domestically without a bloody mary period exactly mm. period exactly on the plane or in the terminal it doesn't yes. matter but i am ordering one at some point during this trip it is tradition at this point right. yeah i will not fly i refuse Mine's just tomato juice mine to mine is mine is a bloody mary because specifically i've had a bloody mary before every flight and the yeah. plane doesn't crash so there that means well that's science that's science, science. Right. absolutely <laughs> absolutely girl i i follow that thread <laughs> entirely okay that, that math's out do either of you ever feel anxious about ordering a um alcoholic beverage when you're on a plane by yourself because I I do it oh I do it oh me too but but every time I'm like I feel like I'm being judged by the other people in the row fuck and because I'm like I'll take a double bloody mary always that's always what I order on a plane a double bloody mary (laughs) I don't give a fuck two little bottles of tea because I don't give a fuck if the person beside me is drinking too because I I mean like I can give a fuck cheers yeah what is the wildest thing that you've seen someone do (laughs) On an airport, because oh, I've, I've got something in my head that I'm like at an airport or on or a plane. On a plane. On a plane. On a plane. On a I've plane. seen some real. Wi- I, I mean, I have. traveled a lot. I bet you have. I have some real pet peeve things that happen. Yeah. People, you tell- people putting their bare feet. God mm-hmm. bless America. They're up, or their dirty ass shoes in between. In between. Get your, get in your, between. Get your fucking your feet out fucking of- feet. Don't in girl. Between. Don't think for one. If you had a dirty ass foot, your up Cheeto in, feet. If, if it was just, blank ass foot, no shoes. I'm poking that shit. No, the hair. All the hair over, over the. Get the, out of here. Your your Rapunzel hair. The fuck just out of here. Basic human Hate. like decency. Okay, I got one for you. Okay. Okay. This one really, really bothers me. Okay. <laughs> Actually, I have a few things that I want to talk about. Now okay. that we've, now we've she, triggered me. She's yes. like, this is what we play for. <laughs> this is what I've been waiting for. I've waited years for this podcast. Yes. Okay. First of all, I hate when 
it's cold somewhere, right? You're mm-hmm. in Detroit, you're mm-hmm. in Columbus, you're mm-hmm. wherever. And yeah. they specifically say, please do not put your coats in the overhead oh. until everyone has put their baggage Honey. away. You always got that big white motherfucker. Karen and Kevin's just God, putting their coats in it's there. It's always a Kevin. <laughs> it's Kevin's and Chad's all day with their big ass fucking fluffy ass coats, not even trying to put it on their bag, just taking up fucking yeah. space. Yep. Always. Yep. There's always someone yep. doing that. And I always put my it. backpack underneath my seat because that is what human courtesy mm-hmm. looks like you fucking monsters people yeah. putting Learn their purses how to <laughs> yes i see I, it and, sometimes and you got the bulkhead people who have to put their shit up there and they have nowhere to put their shit because you've got these morons i sometimes wonder like if if just something about being on a plane makes people think like it's it's just such it's like a like blinders yeah blinders on where it's just like me 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 yeah and and there's no thought Mm-mm. of of other people sometimes because you just like you watching people like I one time and I will I will never do this again but when I was living out of town and I flew home to Ohio I took a, a red eye one time which i red do eyes, not like i hate them a too. red eye I, it's, but i, I do it also anymore. Mm-hmm. was in a middle seat <gasps> ma'am and i i do not like being touched by strangers so the airport no, and airplanes do. are hell for me in that respect but i this person <laughs> was all up in my physical to the point where they're like do you mind no that, that happened to me. They're on that me. That happened to me in an internet. I think we talked about this Ooh. on this podcast. I think people do shit like that on purpose. Like, For, I think they're. You want to get murdered today? Why? Yeah. No, I think that there's like people who are creeps like that who would just like try to like creep in on your space and shit. Mm. I'd be like, I'd have words. Like, there I'd be like, this, do you mind? There was please? this woman. I, I think I, I told you guys this on this podcast, but there was this woman when we were flying to Korea. We were flying to Seoul, and it's a long flight. And we were in the middle. We were, I was in a middle seat oh, fuck. on an international flight. No. And this woman, she like took her shoes <gasps> off. She made Honey, you moving she in? made her mm. home oh. in her seat next to me. I am like, cringing. Yeah. She like had she was all like her stuff was everywhere. It's like she spread mm. out like all of her mm. shit was everywhere. No. And then she was like trying to lay down. I don't know where no. her feet were probably in the seat in front of oh, us. No. Um, but her upper body was like leaning up against me. Like no. up against my Absolutely feet. Absolutely I was like not. No, 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 no. I- I'm going to say it right here. Right here. <laughs> Going on the record. <laughs> <laughs> ladies people cannot treat you like that you can tell people to back the fuck up off you right you don't no i'm not your fucking sleeping bag your fucking pillow i don't know you i ma'am. don't want you in my space please do not touch me and guess what what are you gonna do what are you gonna say no i like no fucking get off of me yeah. Or I am going to call the flight attendant. Oh, this is such a Karen-y feel, fucking move. But like, I'm, I'm 9-1-fucking-1. But I'm just like, come on. No, it's rude. It's, it's like, rude. You are completely invading people's personal space. It is it, so invasive. It's so invasive. Ugh. It's so uncomfortable. You know, you and have me. This was in years chat. ago. Kick in my chair. Years Amen. Ago, preach it. Super non-confrontational Christina, like super Midwestern, was just like, oh, suffer in silence. This is fine. But yeah, oh, I, oh man. But yeah, that's that's traveling Ooh. stresses me out. Okay, yeah. this, stresses me out. So, this brings me to another thing that I want to talk to you guys about I, about planes. Yes, you go first. Oh, sorry, you're still talking planes. I just still didn't want to go. Okay, still talking planes. Cool. We just talked about how gross airport bathrooms are. I mean, airplane bathrooms. They're, and they're yeah. not actually. I mean, they're fine. I can, I can I tell mean, that they're you, clean. You do what you can. I guess you do what you can in that situation. Um. But Mile High Club, Mm-mm. people who fuck nah. in airplane bathrooms. Absolutely not. Why? I'm, I'm not in the mood. No. I am okay. not in Thank you. the no, fucking mood. No, and my mood. anxiety no. being like, so, you know, fucking little Jimmy Listen. has to take a shit and we're in here. Like, there's two bathrooms. Like, no. thinking about people waiting for you. No. Also, it's uncomfortable. Like, those things no. are so small. Like, how? Like, they're like, oh, you sit on the sink. And I'm like, what sink? It's like four inches wide yeah. i've i've never and there's no. nothing about being on an airplane that i'm like i'm uncomfortable 
I don't like it here. I'm just <laughs> trying to get where I'm going. Yeah. There's nothing going on down there that's going to be pleasant no. for me. Mm-hmm. Like, even mm-hmm. if I'm like, the I anxiety will of, be yes. flying with, with Eric in, uh, you know, post these trying times kind of thing. And I'm like, I'm just not in the mood. No. I'm not in the mood. Absolutely not. No. no. Especially not in that stinking ass bathroom. Ugh. No. I'm sorry. They're not going to be quiet enough. No. no I, how? Because even just like even if you can be quiet, which we know is not my strong suit, but if you can be quiet, <laughs> right? Even just the act of thrusting. I just know. It's you there's gonna be oh. a thump, 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 oh, thump. Come on. <laughs> See, no. no. That's why I think I think Mile High Club is a myth. Right? Like think, urban legend. I think it's urban legend myth. I mean, hey, I'm send me your stories. You know what I'm I here for have it. done? What's in that? an airplane bathroom? Oh, no. Oh, God. Cocaine? <laughs> <laughs> right off the seat. <laughs> <laughs> no. Um, <laughs> vaped. Now, oh, it's really difficult shit. because you you lose pressure. So, I mean, I'll, I'll say here. I And only on the international flight because it was like eight hours and I was going to murder somebody. So, I, I did it. I snuck in. I got away with it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, shit. I did it. I stick it to we, the man. I don't recommend this. Um, no, no, it was bad. It was bad. And do as I, I say, since, not as I do. Since gotten nicotine gum for when uh, I fly. Good idea. Know, and it is, it is what it is. Yeah, don't try that at home. It didn't work very well. Like I said, because you're up so high, the pressure. It just doesn't work. It leaks everywhere. It doesn't. Oh, it doesn't work. Gosh. You can't even really do it. I never even oh. thought about that. Yeah. Yeah. Huh. Yeah. Yeah. So, Interessante. Indeed. Don't do it. Okay. One more thing. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay. This is controversial. Okay. Okay. Because there's people out there who are like, <laughs> when the plane lands, why are you standing? Yeah. Mine is the opposite, which is the plane has landed. The bell has rung get out of your fucking seat and away from me immediately Thank you. if not sooner. Thank you. Stand the fuck I up. I stand. I stand. stand. Up. I'm ready. Get out of the I'm way. ready. I'm not saying if you're in the middle seat, stand up or you're in the window seat, well, but if you're in the aisle seat, stand it. up, start that's getting your me. stuff so that when we, it's time to get off this fucking plane, okay. we can get off this motherfucking here, here, plane. Here are my thoughts. Okay. okay. Because I am typically team don't stand up, but that's because if I have to choose, I always choose a window seat oh. so that I can lean up against it and sleep Mm -hmm. so that is that is typically where i sit and to me i one don't see any because if i do stand up then i'm just sitting there with my neck cricked like this Mm -hmm. like underneath the overhead waiting but my my back has been in that crick for longer i would rather just stay seated and then the other part of that but if you're in the aisle completely different but but if you are in the aisle do not be that asshole who is in row 27 Girl. who stands up before and tries everybody to, oh, else yeah. and tries to get their shit and get ahead we, row right. by row. We go row, row by, by row. row. Yes. There's rules. There are rules. Unless the unless they have come on and announced. Yes. There has been times when they come on and they're like, Indeed. hey, if you have, we have a, a few people, people that are running late. So if everybody could just stay tight for then just a minute. don't be that dick. Yeah. Who you. stands up and when Blocks you don't- everybody. Mm-hmm. Yes. Yes. Yeah. We're, we're in agreement. Okay. Yes. Okay. Okay. I'm so glad we got that out. <laughs> I've been holding that. I've been holding that. I didn't even realize. I feel Lord. like a weight's been lifted. <laughs> we got to get people ready to travel again. Yes. These are really and, important tips. Mm. And they're especially important because people have forgotten how to act. Mm. Like being in quarantine, I have been out and I'm now fully vaxxed. Mm-hmm. Praise. Mm-hmm. But I have been out amongst the masses. Yeah. Um, a few times, not a lot. I haven't eaten inside anywhere, but I have eaten outdoors. And the way people are behaving. Mm-mm. Yeah. Because it's they're troubling. all like it's very they're troubling. all like partially feral now. Yeah. And like they completely forgot their table manners. Like they mm-hmm. just have no like concept of like how they're supposed to behave in public. So I can only imagine what flying <laughs> Is gonna be like with people who like they don't know how to Mm-mm. act. Period. I saw somebody pull in to the grocery store and pull in and park and hit another car the other day and just drive off and then pull out. And I mean, they scraped the <gasps> fuck I out of the side of this car furious. and then they just drove off making eye contact with us standing about the game. I'm like, people, and then we went into the grocery store and you just like, 
I'm somebody, you know, Midwestern will like nod to people uh-huh. or sometimes say hi or I, I'll make eye contact with, with people and people Wait. are just like, Girl, it's Mad Max. Fog. It is over. Mad Max in the grocery store <laughs> yeah. for real. Like you have to go in there. Girl, Instacart. Ready. With a plan. Like, with a plan. I saw a guy at the grocery store. This is when I was just like, oh, yeah, no. People don't give a, a single shit anymore. Like I saw a guy in the grocery store straight up in his pajamas, like slippers. And oh, like straight, damn. just like didn't get dressed, like rolled out and was like, <laughs> nah. you know, not today. No, I, I need go pairs. Run some errands. <laughs> yeah, I need pairs. <laughs> I was like, okay. I mean, look, man, you do oh, you. I guess, like, damn. Mm, listen, it's where we're at. It is. It is where we're at. Mm. Oh my gosh. Well, by the way, this is my worst state. I'm Christina. I'm Keegan. I'm Cassie. Um, I think it's important to discuss something that was shared. I think I shared it on on our page, which was that uh, dude face, Prince uh, Philip. William. 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 Sorry. Prince William Mm -hmm. was apparently somehow voted hottest bald. Who voted? It had to (laughs) have been some weird random website. Like this was not uh, agreed upon. No. By the masses. And this is as someone who like... I thought Prince William, when he was young, when I was a kid, I was like, oh, he's so cute. Like when Mm -hmm. he was like, you know, a teenager, I was like, oh, Prince William is so cute. But listen, nobody is looking at Prince William now and being like, that's the sexiest bald guy. The sexiest bald man alive. Like, I'm not trying to shame him. I'm just saying there are a lot of sexy bald men. Amen. Dude. And it just ain't him. And it's not not you, you, boo. It's okay. You got a lot of other things. Yeah. You got money. You got, yeah. You got got (laughs) extra money now that your brother ain't getting none. Yeah. (laughs) You got all the money. You got stuff going on, but it's not. Dude, and you you know, I've I've made it very clear on the podcast. I love a bald guy. And you have the guy with the most hair. I know. You do. Yeah, a wall of hair. But I can think of a bunch of bald guys mm-hmm. that are like way oh, yeah. hotter. Yeah. Oh my gosh. You got Bruce Willis. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Hotter. Yep. The Rock. Jason Statham. Mm-hmm. Hotter. Yep. The Tooch was the one that kept being, being mentioned. Stanley, yeah, Stanley Tucci, Tucci, our king. Yeah. Oh gosh. Yeah. Bald Who king. else? I'm going to look yeah, up. A lot of good ones. Yeah. Yeah. I am going Lots to look Lots of men up. look good with, with no hair. Okay. Yeah. yeah. But to the audacity. For someone yeah, to for say why like who and it was right after the interview I'm like this was their PR team being like okay. I don't know throw something against the wall see if it sticks because like it was right yeah, after the interview with Megan and Harry like, and I was okay. like are you, are you trying to according to his grandmother like yeah. come on like my mommy thinks I'm the best Grammy hairstylist too. yeah okay mm-hmm. yeah so many why are they saying Matt Damon someone put Matt what? Damon he's not bald he's not bald, he's not bald. LL Cool J yeah. uh-huh. Diggs uh-huh. yep Yes, um, yeah. and yes. Yes and yes, indeed. Yeah. <laughs> Andre Agassi, Billy no. Zane, nah. Michael Jordan, Vin Diesel, mm-hmm. Patrick Stewart. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So I'm going to go with the top three okay. bald male celebrities. All right. Okay. So all three of these, I think, are more attractive okay. than Prince William. Okay. All right. Here we go. You got Dwayne the Rock Johnson. Yes. Mm-hmm. Who we've done multiple times on this and podcast. And would still do <laughs> and multiple times. And would do over and over again. Bruce Willis. Mm-hmm. Okay. And Jason Statham. Okay. okay. Fuck, Mary kill. All Ooh. right. I am going to marry Dwayne the Rock Johnson. Good move. You might be yeah. first lady someday. Huh? Did you hear about that? What's that? He's like, oh, first lady. oh yeah, yeah, no, I'm, I'll dude. vote for that. I'll vote for that. <laughs> I got my... Put my vote in for him. Um, I am. Yeah, I'm going to marry him. And I would make a very fine first lady, I believe. I think so. Yeah. You know, yeah, I'd like to see your Christmas decor. Yeah. yeah oh, my God. Me too. Can you imagine someone with knuckle tattoos being <laughs> yes. the first lady? Yeah, oh, I can't I'm here wait. for it. Um, OK. And then I am. OK, we got Statham and Willis. Mm-hmm. Hmm. This one's actually kind of hard yeah. for me. It's it's the more hard. I'm like thinking, I'm like, hmm, mm-hmm. Mm. It is hard. Yeah. I think it's going to be think, very personal for all of us. Yeah. yeah. I think I'm going to fuck Statham. Like, I don't. A little don't, dangerous. A little dangerous, yeah. right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Like, Accent. I like it. I feel like Bruce Willis might cry after. <laughs> he does have emotions. He can be a little, like, cheesy sometimes. I kind of like cheese, though. I think. Oh, this was so hard. It's very hard. It's very hard. I know. I couldn't even say I'm going to kill but I, I guess that's what I'm doing. It's been inferred, yes. Yeah. 
Statham, yeah. I just, you're right, danger. There's an He's edge. There's danger, an edge, right? which I do I, like. I'm going to marry Jason Statham. Okay, okay. You I'm would. <laughs> here for that accent. It's, I'm okay. here for that highway yeah. to the danger zone. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I'm here yeah. for... Uh, but something. you know what? He's somebody who seems tough and is tough, but would then make you pancakes in the morning. Oh, you yeah. Know? Like, I get that vibe. I feel like I would do things sexually with him. Yeah. <laughs> That it's are exciting. like very exciting and like, but he would be sweet. He would be the the person that would wake up early. He would. And make, you already make got pancakes, pancakes, yeah, and just be like Fresh a total gentleman. Yeah, yes. he'll he'll break somebody's hand for <laughs> like touching your butt in public. Yeah, but he will make you breakfast in the morning. You know. Yeah, <laughs> I'm like yeah. blushing. My face. Is I know. Hot. I, I think it's. I think smitten. it's. Yeah, I think that's a good vibe for me. It's good. I, I like that for you. And then I think I'm going to have a really fantastic, fun one night stand with The Rock. Yeah. Yeah. It's a good one. That's a good one. Yeah. I think he'd be fun. I yeah. think sex with him would be like super just like fun. And I think the whole the whole night it'd be like drinks. I can see him having yeah. fun with the friend group. Yes. Like, it'd just be fun. It'd be total yeah. fun. I don't have a vibe with him that I think... It's the barbecue house for sure. Yeah. 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 Oh, yeah. yeah. He's got a real nice pool with a waterfall. That's yeah, right. Yeah. Yeah. That's right. Um, y- Okay. So I actually like Bruce Willis. I like the relationship that he had with Demi Moore and Ashton Kutcher and that they were able to like make that whole co-parenting Co-mingle, situation yeah. work. You know, it sealed the um, deal for me. Yeah. With Bruce Willis. That that blues band. Oh God. oh god! Oh god! <laughs> the thing that everyone tries to forget, but oh it was a, it happened. But sir. you know what? I like a little cheese. I do like a little cheese. However, mm-hmm. I also feel like the rock's a little cheesy. Oh yeah, the, the right ro- kind of cheese. The, and he's it's fun. like a gouda. Yeah, and, and he's fun. <laughs> um, I'm gonna marry the rock. Oh yeah, I think that that's, that's a, okay. vibe. a fun vibe. I'll be honest. I will back out of the first lady <laughs> position because you know what. You guys, you'd make such a fabulous first lady. Thank you so much. And I would vote for you (laughs) Uh, times a hundred. You guys would be a power couple. Oh my gosh. Thank you so much. I'm going to have like social causes. My first lady like thing. Oh, I'm going to be so excited to decorate for Christmas. You guys are all going to come over for Christmas. Oh, I am stoked. Yes. Yes. Okay. So I'm going to marry the rock. I too am going to fuck Jason Statham. I think. Yeah. There is Oof. there's danger. There in is a there. sexual energy there that I can get behind. I have a very clear, vivid image or in front of. of <laughs> uh, yeah, exactly. <laughs> Either way. Either of way. him like saying something really dirty in my ear mm-hmm. in that accent, like from behind me, and I'm like, he here is the for one. It. He's the one that you can most easily picture having sex with. Mm-hmm, like mm-hmm, he mm-hmm. he has a there's a very strong sexual energy yes. mm-hmm. emanating Palpable. off of that man. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Yes. Allegedly. Allegedly. <laughs> yes. So, yeah. I'm, um, I am gonna these are just it. our opinions. Uh, <laughs> none of these views are... <laughs> We do not know these men. Uh, uh, yeah, and then and then I'm gonna <laughs> yet. I'm, hmm? <laughs> do you know them? Can you hook us up? At uh, Jason Statham. <laughs> shoot your shot, and uh, yeah, I'm gonna go ahead and and kill Bruce Willis. Nothing personal. Yeah, just, yeah, yeah. You know, the others make more sense. Yeah, yeah. Oh, I love that journey for us. <laughs> Me too. That was a good. Whew, <laughs> sorry, Prince was William, a journey. but you got no. I mean, Prince. <sighs> Prince William versus Jason Statham. It's not even. No. A, it's not a contest. No. It's, 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 it's wet bread. Listen, you know. I would Prince Stanley William. Tucci over that, and I don't 100. even think Stanley. I, he's good looking, but I'm not like good gagging Stan, over Stanley it. Stanley Tucci just makes me like too. He makes me smile. nervous. Oh, like he might to be, be too with, smart. Yeah, he's just too Something. together of mm. a person that I would literally be thinking the whole time about my flaws. Like I was going to say mean? the thing with Stanley Tucci for me, I love him, I love but him. everyone loves him so much mm-hmm. that I'm like, you I can't. don't know if I can bring him around because my friends, like if we ever break up, my friends are going to dump me for yeah. a Stanley Tucci. It's the Tooch. It's the Tooch. Yeah. You know, the thing <laughs> is, is like I, Christina, I just envision myself 
bowl in a china shop like his house yes. is well put together yeah i accidentally bump into this chess table Ugh. it goes everywhere like mm-hmm. yeah no it's I, I i hear what you're saying yeah. i'd be that that person that would have to like you know set an alarm early like wake up mm. brush my teeth like mm. you know what i mean like what are you gonna yeah. have morning breath with like, the tooch no Miss, yeah. like marvelous mrs mazel <laughs> yeah. it's true it's true yeah oh I love him though so much. I do too. Yeah, but and I bet he doesn't expect that from you. You no, know, what he I mean? doesn't. You're putting the you're putting the pressure on yourself because yeah. he yeah. would never. No, he would, he would never put the pressure on you. But you would feel <laughs> allegedly. like allegedly. But you would feel like you have to step up your game. <laughs> yeah, you would because you're like the tooch gets up in the morning and, and does Peloton. You know, oh, oh, yeah. and you're totally. like you're like now I have to get up and do Peloton <laughs> and <laughs> squeeze that fresh orange juice. <laughs> Where in the other relationships, like Statham's doing that for you. Yes. Yeah. The tooch gets up at 5 a.m. And, you know, like Statham and The Rock, they're both working out. Oh, yeah. But they definitely don't want you or expect you to. Yeah. They're Mm -hmm. like, if if you'd like. If you want, for sure, pop in. But do not (laughs) feel the pressure. Yeah. Like I want you to I want you to be a lady oh. that you want to be. Yeah. That's feel, the kind of support I feel I, like I'm getting. Mm-hmm. I feel like The Rock appreciates my curves. That's right. I do too. Yeah. Yes. I do too. Mm-hmm. Yeah. In fact, yeah, he's like, yes, please. You know mm-hmm. what I also picture? This is very specific, but I feel like if The Rock, if you're pregnant with The Rock, like he is treating you mm. like precious gold. He is rubbing your feet. Mm. He's rubbing oil on your belly. Mm-hmm. Like the, the The Rock is like Mm, he's taking he's care of you. Yeah, 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 yeah. 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 He seems like, yeah. <sighs> what a well, nice daydream. <laughs> <laughs> Allegedly. <laughs> you guys want to take five and we'll come back with stories? Yes. Sure. And we're back. Oh, All right. I, was... I just took a giant gulp of michelada <laughs> right then. Like, I know. Right I saw you... my opportunity. I let it just Oh, my slide God. Right I know. We made eye contact. I thought you were going <laughs> to swoop in there. <laughs> I had to swallow that beer real fast. Uh, Christina, would you like to... Hands I off. will get us going. Okay. Um, so I met a girl online and one night we got together and had dinner. The dinner was good. We had good conversation and ended up back at her place. One thing leads to another and we have sex. After we are done, she starts complaining about her hip hurting. Uh Oh, no. She you knocked it right out of joint. <laughs> mm-hmm. She had mentioned she had some kind of hip issue earlier in the night. Over the next 30 minutes or so, her hip got worse and worse. So I ended up taking her to the emergency room. Imagine. At the ER, she ends up getting into a big argument (gasps) with the nurses and then the doctor about how they are treating her hip issue. Since I have no idea what the issue is or what her medical past is. Ma'am, this is a first date. (laughs) I mostly stay quiet. But I do tell the doctors and nurses about us sleeping together and our hip hurting after. Eventually, they write her a prescription for some pain meds and give her a pain shot in her hip, and she is released. By this time, it's about 2 a.m. We're both very tired, and I'm driving her home when I try to make it through a yellow light and hit the red halfway through. Oh, ma'am. And of course, there was a cop there, and I got pulled over. The officer asked for my info, and I asked her if she would grab the registration from the glove box. She snapped back, I'm not involved in any of this shit. Oh, I just I'm took sorry, you, wait, I, I spent my entire evening at the ER with you. <laughs> Ma'am. Which I am not involved in any of that at shit. <laughs> oh, Jesus. Then just crossed her arms and sat there. The cop asked if she was okay. She said yes, and he asked for her ID which she refused oh to give God. to him. Oh. oh my, like this person seems like a nightmare. You're getting into fights with nurses and doctors and police officers. Like, oh, okay. I have a lot of questions about that drug-seeking behavior. Mm. The cop takes my ID back to his car. A few minutes later, another cop car pulls up. Ooh. I am asked to step out of the car to talk to the cop who pulled me over. While I do that, the other cop goes to the passenger door <gasps> to talk to her. Oh, no. The cop asks me if everything is okay because she seems agitated and scared. I told him about our date, tell him we were just at the hospital and she's in pain. My license is clear, so he tells me he will let me off with a warning. About that time, <gasps> oh, no. oh no, they ran her license. The huh? girl starts screaming at the other cop. <gasps> she is refusing to identify herself or give them ID. When they try to take her out of the car, she bites <gasps> one of them and fights. 
ending up in handcuffs in the back of the car. Oh my God. This blows my mind. I thought your head hurt, lady. I am terror. Like, I'm like, don't. Don't. What are you doing? What are you? uh." They get her ID and it turns out she is multiple there you arrest go. There it is. Yeah. they arrest her and take her away and i'm let go and i head home over the next 48 hours i no. would find out the girl had been arrested multiple times for drug and identity theft crimes she had been arrested for pill shopping which is exactly what mm-hmm. she was using me for in the hospital Several days later, I returned her phone to her because she had left it in my car and she was pissed at me. I'm mailing that shit. I'm mailing that shit back. Sorry. We're not getting together in person ever again. No. She was pissed at me because I stopped for the police. She told me I should have just hauled ass when the cop pulled out. Oh my God. You know what? Or you could have just gotten my registration out of the glove box and we would have been moved on to the next immediately. I mean, I mean... Oh my god! That that whole story just made me so nervous because I've been pulled over multiple times, Ooh. and I'm like ten and two on the wheel. Yep, always uh, so yes. anxious, so yep. like scared. Yes. The idea of like talking back to a no. cop or biting a cop. Oh biting. Like, my god! Now you got an assault charge, mother. Hi, hi. this is America. You can't go no. biting cops. No. no, no, you cannot. Oh my gosh! So yeah, I'm just like, can you imagine? Doing no. That on the day? No, I'd be like, please get her out of my car. Thank you. It's Goodbye. scary out there, man. I can't uh, imagine like dating. Oof. You don't know what you're going to get. No, it's don't. just like so, that's the that's basically OK. We're done now with this yeah. podcast because that's basically all you have to say is like, yeah. you don't know what you're going to get. That's mm-hmm. always how it's been. I think yeah. That's why we have a puck. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> it's like you think you're getting one thing and you're like, Jesus. if you're lucky, it's just the puppets in the trunk. OK, <laughs> you <know>? thank you. <laughs> Honestly, best case scenario. Best case scenario. You get some guy who pulls puppets out of his trunk, mm-hmm. surprises you with a puppet show. Maybe he doesn't have a bed. But is that really the worst? Is it, is the, it the worst? Is it the worst? I don't day? think it is the worst. <laughs> okay. <day at> this <laughs> <point>. <laughs> wow. <sighs> OK. <clears throat> I meet this guy for lunch. I show up and he pulls up beside me. The very second I get out of the car, he's nonstop showering me with complaints. He loves <sighs> my outfit, my hair, or a compliment. my shoes. You said complaints. Oh, geez. <laughs> I was like, I was like I- um, okay, well, if you've got so many complaints, I will just take myself on home then. <laughs> no, nonstop showering me with compliments. Wow. Love bomb. Yes. He loves my outfit. He loves my hair, my shoes. He just knows that we're going to have an amazing time. Okay. This never stops. I was, according to him, the hottest, funniest, smartest, most incredible thing on the planet, and he would not stop letting me know it. It's like the opposite of last week's story. Yes. (laughs) But it makes me... It makes me equally uncomfortable. Yeah, I'm going to side eye just as much. Like, why? Yeah. Before the server can come back... Uh, with our drink order he had grabbed my arm across the table Mm. wow you have no hair on your arms okay do you just like have any body hair um what the fuck this smooth move segues him into caressing my arm and eventually attempting to hold my hand this all happens within under five minutes are you gomez Uh, adams uh, like i don't (laughs) understand why are you Mm. please get off my arm why are you touching me like this when our server comes back, he made a weird joke about us going to the restroom together in front of her. I was mortified. I wouldn't like that. I don't like it. He then suddenly and without provocation decided to tell me that he loves eating pussy. It's his favorite thing. Okey-dokey. And he's really great at it. Are sure. You? Sure you are. He insisted on sitting next to me after I said that I was un- wasn't comfortable with it and asked him to stay across from me. He actually scoffed at me before he moved seats and no. Uh, now you're pinned anyway, in. I know, right? Ugh. I st- I stuck it out for the sheer sake of being polite, but once it came, it became clear that he was actually married and looking for an <gasps> affair. I had to nope the fuck out of there. Okie dokie. Ah! I feel like that you took a turn. Took a turn. Took a turn. Oh my goodness! And it's mm-hmm. that. That's why the love bombing, the, mm-hmm. the all that stuff to make you trying to win you over, trying to win you over. Mm. So you're like gross. Ugh. I hate it. Thanks. Okay. I hate it. 
So this is from someone who works at a restaurant. <laughs> oh, I love these. Yeah, I love these too, who um, got to witness a bad date. Mm. A few years back, I was working at Pizza Hut as a driver. Yes. <laughs> we had the smallest store in the area and there were no booths or tables for customers. You come in to pay and leave. <laughs> right? Bye. We've all been in like, it's like you come in, you pick up your pizza, you fucking leave. You can okay. get right? out. Yeah. So there is one small bench, barely able to seat two inside the door. We all know what this looks like. Mm -hmm. This couple, in quotes, probably freshmen, come in and the lad nervously orders a single medium pizza. The whole time ordering... (laughs) 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 The whole time ordering it, (laughs) he was trying to be very literate and use a bunch of old English sounding phrases to sound appealing or smart or something. We've also met people like this, right? (laughs) They're like, I'm like, sorry, this is not like Shakespeare. You're ordering a pizza at Pizza Hut. (laughs) My face is hot. (laughs) I don't love it. Fast forward the 10 minutes of cooking time. He spent crammed on that tiny bench with the girl who was visually uncomfortable, but also either too polite or too nervous to leave. I was hoping, (laughs) sorry, I was hoping they'd leave and take it to the car or Mm, to the park. No. But no, he started trying to hand feed her pizza (laughs) on a bench too, (laughs) on a bench too small. To comfortably seat two. No. With three to four customers in line less than two feet from them. And drivers constantly having to step over their legs to get out of the store. (laughs) Oh, my God. That's so awkward. It's so awkward. In between the cringy one another bite offers. I'm all good. feeding her pizza. No, thank you. No, thank you. (laughs) She was practically shaking at this point and closing her eyes out of embarrassment. That was a big mistake because he slips Mm. in for a kiss instead of pizza. No, 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 no. Regrettably, it worked and she threw up on the rest of the pizza in his lap. Oh no. no. She bolts and runs off. He tries to order another pizza to go because, oh. quote, she didn't get to finish it. She'll like it if I bring her another. Oh, oh no. sweet baby. Oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, no. This baby. poor girl. Oh, my God. Who obviously didn't want to be there. Why are you even on a date with this person? Like, oh. in, because. Listen, like old school Pizza Hut back in the day mm. was the J. Can't say it enough. Was. So it was so good. Can't say it awesome. enough. Awesome. Mm-hmm. If you were in a a show at school, yes. where'd you go after? <laughs> yeah. Pizza, Pizza Hut. Hut. Mm-hmm. Yep. Yeah. If you were in a choir, where'd you go afterwards? Pizza Hut. But this was clearly not at not. that time because like those Pizza Huts, like back mm. in the day, like those Pizza I don't Huts think were they sit exist down. anymore. No, no, and occasionally you'll see like a building that you knew was a Pizza Hut because mm-hmm. right. there was a very specific shape yes. to them yes. and now it's like a FedEx Kinko's. Right. You know? <laughs> right. Like, like, mm. 100%. But at the time, I mean, like Pizza Huts were like sit-down restaurants with yes. like buffets. Red booths. Yes. Right? And like the pizza was like decent. Yeah. yeah. Like, that, oh God, that, they had that buttery, crust, that one crust. That, so oh God, buttery. that buttery crust. Mm, bitch. Mm. Oh my God, girl, so mm-hmm. good. Uh, pan, the but, pan pizza. But this was obviously not that like you're sitting <laughs> oh my god oh my god why i want pan pizza right now oh only like, it is not dine in no. why are you trying to <sighs> hand feed her a piece of pizza my second hand embarrassment makes me <laughs> just literally i like unzip my skin suit and walked <laughs> out oh honey oh my gosh okay well i have quite the tainted love story i for you guys. am ready so my tainted love was found in a feverish perusal of many different 48 hours episodes. <laughs> Amazing. <And laughs> I, I I mean, I know we've talked about it many times, but like I can't emphasize enough how hard it is sometimes yeah. to find a story. It's like because it's not just a crime or like a murder. It's it to be something specifically like about mm-hmm relationships yeah or dating and you don't want to do something that's like been done recently by like somebody else like it's like it's a lot sometimes you want to do something that like you're excited about too so i am going to be doing 
a story about the children of thunder. I don't know what, what? this is. I can't fucking wait. <laughs> okay. This sounds like a call. This sounds like everything. Okay. So Selena Bishop was a beautiful 22 year old girl with many friends, especially close to her mother, Jennifer. Now, Jennifer Villarin had fallen head over heels in love many years earlier with Elvin Bishop, a famous blues rock guitarist. In fact, the song Fooled Around and Fell in Love was written about Jennifer. Oh, mm. Elvin. What yeah. an interesting first name. You know that song, right? I fooled around and fell in love. Okay, yes. Yeah. Now that you've sang that's it, about, yes. That's about <laughs> Jennifer. Aww. So... However, she was not about that rock star wife life and the romance crumbled, leaving her a single mother. A family friend claims the relationship between mother and daughter was extremely close, more of a best friend situation, and that Selena had grown into a responsible and driven young woman. She spent two years at an art school in PA before moving back up to the Bay Area and she got a job waitressing at this like local cafe. Mm -hmm. uh, they lived in like a small ish town so like everybody knew each other and everyone knew selena in the bay area yeah okay yeah, yeah yeah norcal yeah norcal and so one night she went out to a rave with like some of her friends like and you do. she was uh -huh. dancing feeling herself having a good time when this tall dark mm. handsome stranger you in danger girl with his hair and a ponytail <laughs> comes I think up i know this guy strikes up a conversation with her was it a lightning strike? Was it? Yes. <laughs> it, it was, was a like, thunder strike. Was, <laughs> thunder! <laughs> he introduced himself as Jordan, and the two started dating pretty much immediately, with Selena bragging to all her friends and family about him. Now, her friends and family were a little uneasy about it for a couple of reasons. I bet. Mm -hmm. So I want you guys to pretend I come to you. <laughs> okay. Okay. We're um, here Liz, for you. You, you know... You know, you know I'm how the one we who's are. Gonna side eye. Here we I go. I am head over heels with this uh -huh. man named he Jordan. He sounds great. Jordan. Mm -hmm. I met him dancing. He's probably the dancing. one. Tell me a little about him. Okay. <laughs> so he wouldn't tell her his last name, mm -hmm. his Don't phone number, or allow her to take pictures of him. No. I, I <laughs> no. And what? I'm always the one who's supportive on these, but this yeah. one is a no what for me. What year did this happen? 2000. No. No. Where's your, my no. space? Nothing? No. 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 We are in the 21st century. So no. We're done. All it, he's just Jordan. And what's his name? Okay. Oh, okay. Just of course. Jordan. Of You're not course. Cher. All right. Like, of course I, his name's Jordan I, too, right? You don't need to ask him personal questions about okay, himself. Sebastian, okay, Sebastian. Like, Come on. Uh, uh, leave uh. me alone, mom. <laughs> no, <laughs> I... Uh, I wish a motherfucker would with my friends. You know, mm. you know, if the Keegan and I would be showing up with our big hats and our big sunnies on like in the corner. Like, I mean, I, I will say that um, Amazon is trying to sell me on face via Facebook ads. They're mm -hmm. trying to sell me um, binoculars that you don't have to hold on. They look like sunglasses. <laughs> like binoculars it Bitch, came I know up and you. i was like i see i see you seeing me you're <laughs> fbi agents like you might want to try these yeah <laughs> listen really he, get get in good you might the, need these yeah yeah on the job. <laughs> so it was also um imperative to him that he would not meet anyone important in her life w what okay what who the fuck you think you are she's 20 Jordan. how old is she she's 22 Okay. So her mom was a little concerned and you like think? got together with, her, and you know, she, uh, Jennifer was like younger herself. She's like, mm, I, I don't like this. I'm getting a bad vibe. Like she moves out of her mom's house into a small studio apartment so she can spend more time with Jordan. And so her mom's like talking to her, her, her friend and is like, okay, I don't, I don't like this. Let's go check it out like let's make mm -hmm. up some excuse to go to her new apartment i know they're together right now just so mm -hmm. i can get eyes yeah. on who this guy is yeah and her friend's like fuck yeah we're doing this yeah yes of course i me I and can't your mom tell you how uneasy this would make me feel and i i don't have kids but if this was your kid yeah like oh, yeah those, you're those like mama i'm getting bear eyes instincts. Yeah. At least on this motherfucker. Uh -uh. Like you want if your kids to grow up to be independent and do their of own course. thing, but at the same time, if Dylan came to me and he's like, "I'm, I'm dating Jordan. 
that's it. You can't know anything else. No I'm, last name, no phone number. Nothing. You well, and, and not them. only you don't get to know anything else, I don't know anything else. Right. Yeah. Like he's not telling me his last name. He's not telling like me no. anything about like no. I'd be like sorry. Um Christina, we have a we have a we're gonna go run over to Dylan's. Do you place. know yeah. how fast my dad yeah. would lose his shit mm. if he knew that I was dating someone and I said and I said to my father mm-hmm. You can't know his, he doesn't want you to know his last name. Oh. <laughs> uh uh-uh. uh. Like he'd be like, no, you gotta run a background check on that motherfucker right, right quick. now. Yeah. yeah. Oh my God. I couldn't tell my dad a word of uh-uh, any of this. Please. My dad would be, well, of course, because my dad would already have had it investigated. He'd be like, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Excuse me, sir. <laughs> yeah. I got connects. What's up? What's up? So her and her friend decide to go over and ask Selena, like, can I borrow a blouse? Because they were like similar mm-hmm, styles mm-hmm. or whatever. And so she she finally does like meet him, gets to catch him. And so her friend is like talking to Jennifer, like, what'd you think of him? Like, mm-hmm. give me all the deets, girl. And she's like, he seems nice, you know. He, nondescript. Uh, nondescript. He ain't. Because uh, that's some I have a feeling shit. He, he's not. <laughs> I have a feeling have there's a feeling. more to the story. Yeah. So... The, she finally met and she's like, okay, I mean, we'll see. We'll see how this runs out, but my heckles are up. So Selena begins telling her friends and her mom that Jordan is going through a bad divorce, but that he's also getting ready to inherit a shit ton of money from his go. grandmother. So she mentioned that he had her open bank accounts oh, in her name yeah. for him so that he could hide the money from his ex-wife who was just being unreasonable. Mm. Okay, I mean, also that. Yeah. I I uh sister solidarity. I'm never going to do something like that. Like on your word, just like No. Oh, she's she's nuts and like we have to hide this money from her. I'm like that feels gross to me. I don't me. like it. Just yeah. period. Yeah. Mm. Things seem to be going well, and the couple plan to go on a romantic camping trip to no. Yosemite. No. She asks her mom to house sit for her, and that's where everything falls apart. Now, on August 3rd, 2000, James Soliday woke to the sound of gunshots. A second later, he heard footsteps racing outside and the roar of a getaway car. He ran downstairs and into Selena's apartment only to find two bodies unmoving on the bed, and he places a panicked phone call to 911. Police arrive to find Jennifer Villarin and her friend, James Gamble, shot dead. The next day, Annette Steinman and her husband, Ivan, were reported missing by their daughter, who had been trying for a few days to reach them. They had been married for 55 years and were comfortably retired with a ton of money in their mm-hmm. bank account. Mm-hmm. After breaking into the house, police were unable to find any trace of the Steinmans except for Ivan's gold watch, which looked like it had been ripped apart on the couch. Police were stumped as to where the elderly victims would have run off to, but didn't immediately suspect foul play. That was also the day that they get a phone call from Selena's co-workers they can't find her. She's missing. She was supposed to be at work, back from her camping trip, and she hasn't shown up. So hmm. they've got, and this is like a small Bay Area thing. They've got a missing elderly couple. They've got two dead bodies and a missing girl. And so they're like, okay. They're, they're like, it's Monday. Can we ease it into our week? Like, it's- Jesus. <laughs> like, first thing on a Monday. <laughs> Looks like somebody's got a case of the Mondays. <laughs> Am I right? I haven't even had my coffee yet. So police search Selena's phone records. They don't find a Jordan. However, they did find a number she called frequently that was registered to a Justin Helzer. When they dig a little deeper on Justin, they find that he had recently purchased a 9mm gun. The same caliber used in the killing of Selena's mother and Mm. her friend. When they go talk to Justin is when it all breaks open. Okie dokie. So. Hmm. Police get to the Helzer house and a dude opens the door. They're asking after Justin and this guy's like, yeah, that's my brother. You know, that kind of thing. They're like, can we, you know, come in and and talk to you? Like, yeah, 
they go in. There's drug paraphernalia oh, Jesus. everywhere. Yeah, like, sure, there's come like, on in. Mushrooms, ecstasy. You don't think like, hey, maybe we should like clean them all up. Would you mind just standing on the porch for <laughs> like five? I, took a five. Come out. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, like, how about I? I'll just I'll come out here. The police are like, yeah, y- y'all are under arrest, and so <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> there's Ew. three people in the home at that time: Don Goodman, Taylor Helzer. Well, his name's Glenn Taylor Helzer, but he goes by Taylor mm-hmm. and Justin Helzer. So like, we're going to come down to the station. We're going to mm-hmm. figure out you're under arrest for possession. Yeah, and, how and stupid. Sort of yeah. So just, uh, way to get yourself Dude, also, arrested. Also, if I'm in the house and I know there's cops at the door, there is a back door, right? Yeah. Said place. Well, funny that you mentioned that because Taylor found that back door. And yeah. as they're arresting him, Taylor takes off. He's out in the neighborhood. He's running. He is running from the cops, jumping over fences and stuff like that. Parkour. He is parkouring his Goodbye. way into a neighbor's house. He threatens this neighbor, like, to try to help him, like, disguise himself. So she gives him his, her husband's clothes. He uses a knife to cut his ponytail off. Wow. And then he's jumping fences and jumps right into the arms a of, of a cop. <laughs> so he's caught in Absolute <laughs> dumb piece of shit. Why wouldn't you have just stayed where you were? They're not, I mean, what, they're going to canvas the neighborhood, but they're not going to go into every house. Right. Just see where you're at, no? Yeah. So listen, they're don't not very smart. take Look. advice from me. <laughs> don't. They are they are under arrest for those charges. They're going to talk to them about what they know about Selena. Well, another call comes in to the station because there are nine black duffel bags that were found mm. in a river. Mm. completely filled with body parts. No. Nine. I was hoping it was going to be money. I'm not going to lie. And it is, it is drugs. just mixed and matched pieces. <gasps> oh, oh, my God. Oh my God. Oh my God. Imagine you're the person that found that. Oh, Terrifying. My God. Right? You That's never sleep again. That's the scariest never. thing I've ever heard you in my life. You never sleep again. Ever. So... What a Monday. Huh? Right. Still. Jesus We're still on Monday, Christ. right? <laughs> Jesus. Oh, my gosh. Still on the same day. Yeah. So they're like, this is a lot. Um, okay. What the fuck is going on here? So they start digging into the Helzer past. So I'm going to tell you about Justin and Taylor Helzer. Normal kids. No one who knew the Helzer boys as children suspected they uh, they'd grow up to be what they ended up being raised by devout Mormon parents in Martinez, a cozy town, 50 minutes drive Northeast of San Francisco. The Helsers had a relatively normal childhood. Now, Glenn who went by Taylor was the charming gregarious older brother. Justin was more introverted, but he was a member of the high school wrestling team and youth group leader at their church. Now, here's the other thing. I listened to a podcast episode called uh, Cults, and they were talking about, they were like very devout Mormons. But more than that, Taylor's grandfather used to have, used to tell the family that like Jesus would come up to his porch and have conversations with him. Okay. And <laughs> Taylor's parents believed the grandfather. Of course. Wait, did. so what you're telling me is that Jesus has not come to your porch? <laughs> yeah, I, every, I mean that's an every Sunday. I thought I thought that was common. We have well, tea when and you crumpets. See, when you see when you see two footprints, it's, uh, it's actually <laughs> stop it. Stop it. He was carrying you he was all carrying along. you all along on the porch. Oh on the porch. <laughs> so so Taylor got to learn like soups early that like if you tell people that you talk to Jesus, you get special treatment, right? So I see where this is going. Yes. Oldest uh-huh. brother. And so he begins to get Visits soups on the porch. in to religion. He's like, guess what, mom? Jesus talks to me too. And she's like, and oh she's my like God. that's awesome. You're amazing. And they, they just drill into Justin the whole time. Like you listen to your brother. Always follow your brother. Your brother's special. He's got something going. He was on the fast track too. 
by the time he was like 15, 16, he was already like a priest in the LDS. Oh. That's what they called. Like he was, he went to Brazil on a missionary trip and he had, I, I, I did watch the 48 hours on this. Yes. This, okay. He had a knack for convincing people. And, and then he started to believe that something was messed up with the Mormon religion. The second coming was happening. Jesus told him, and in his head, he didn't say Jesus, it was spirits. Spirit told me that the second coming is going to happen and we need to be warrior priests because that the the Mormon faith is like falling apart. We need to be war, warrior priests. Is this what Lori Day was part of? Oh, I mean. it sounds like it. Mm. So, his brother was like, okay, I'm supposed to follow you. You know, you're, you know, Mommy better. And daddy Mommy, told daddy me. told me to. And they end up meeting John Goodwin. who's it's such a sad story because when you have somebody that has been diagnosed, like as a narcissistic personality disorder and a sociopath, they can identify people that are in mm-hmm. crisis and vulnerable and, and vulnerable mm-hmm. people that, and he's just, and they prey on that yeah. manipulator. Not mm-hmm. only that, his mother helped him out and did him one solid by putting him in this like self help oh. seminar thing. Oh it no. Made me How think to of, meet friends and influence people. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It was called friends. like impact America or something like that. And it is just like, it literally taught him everything he needed to know about how to break down people. That's the thing about stuff like that. Like they always say that, like they say that Charles Manson, it was that book, how to make friends and influence people like, which can be very good for people who are trying to figure out how to navigate Navigate, socially who aren't sociopaths. Right. But in the hands, but in the hands of a sociopath or a narcissist, it's very dangerous. It's like, here's how to prey on people essentially. Yeah. Oh. So she was somebody that had gone through a divorce, was like at one point living in her car, had attempted suicide. She was at a Mormon murder mystery party. And she's Taylor, who was described as like good looking, charismatic, gregarious, went, made a beeline for her. Yeah. And she was, you know, mousy and not conventionally attractive and like was blown away that he a man was like her. Taylor was talking to her. Well, and she was just like, are too good looking. that's right. Then this is when it helps to have low self-esteem. Mm-hmm. Cause I'm just like, no, I don't trust this. No, whatsoever. I don't like it. Uh, mm-hmm. In fact, I'm going to run the other way. If you're too good looking and you <laughs> approach me, I'm like, I don't trust this. I don't trust. I this don't want to buy that. <laughs> it doesn't, it doesn't take long before like Dawn is under Taylor's wing. And, um, is is pretty much like willing to do whatever he wants to do. Now his plan, his plan is to get a bunch of Brazilian orphans, train them as an army to take over the Mormon church. Um, Why? <laughs> Why? <sighs> I have questions. I so many. Please, you know it's where, <laughs> where it's to start. Lot. Where yeah. to start? Children. Um, yeah. Wh- oh. Is it like a war? Like is this like a twenty year plan? You're gonna yeah. get kids and then like, like with weapons? Train? Well, yeah. the other part of his plan was that they needed money to make this happen. Yeah. Sure. So you, you can't make it's an ambitious plan, right? Yeah, I mean, are, are, adoption is expensive, correct? So, <clears throat> so we gotta have money for it now. Before you feed these kids, <laughs> before he was a warrior priest for the Children of Thunder, he worked for Morgan Stanley with people's retirement accounts. Oh, goody. And that's where the Steinmans came in, in that they were one of his clients. And he happened to know how much money they had in the, the bank it's account. It's an I care a lot situation. Rosamund Pike is just waiting in the wings. Right. All right. So he's like told Justin and Don about his plan to finance their warrior priest project to take over the Mormons that they were going to, he was going to find a girl to make her fall head over heels in love with him and use her to launder money from one of his old clients, kill all of them, 
do that as many times as possible until they had the money that they needed to start their their plan. And he told them that like his his point of view was it, there is no right or wrong. There's only results. And it's not okay. wrong if you're doing it for the greater good. And you're doing it if if spirit is telling me that we need to do this to prevent Satan from winning, then you're on the side of right. So even if it's violent, it doesn't matter. It's it's for the right. And they <sighs> bought it big time. Wow. So <clears throat> that's how, I mean, it, it unravels quickly from there. You know, once the body parts are discovered, police talk to neighbors, other people associated with Helzers, and they actually have to get a cult deprogrammer to come in and talk to Don in order to, they realize quickly on like what a hold yeah. he has over her. Yeah, and yeah. it takes time, yeah. but the full scope of the story, it starts with them you know, seducing Selena, who had no idea any of, of this was going on. They kidnapped the Steinmans and are pretty much like what they did and how they thought they were going to get away with this is is ridiculous because they kidnapped them. They make them write checks out for a total of $100,000. They call the bank and they're like, yeah, you know, my name's Selena and my grandparents are writing me checks for a hundred thousand dollars so i can get a surgery that i need to get and they're like okay well just bring in identification or whatever you can cash the check so they dress dawn up in like this giant country hat what do you call it cowboy hat (laughs) cowboy hat (laughs) country hat they put her in a wheelchair and like some kind of weird garish design disguise so you're drawing what? more attention to exactly thank you. exactly like the the bank manager that they ended it's up like that's weird. interviewing later was like yeah no i it was weird from the start i put a hold on the checks and it was very memorable because it was such a strange yeah thing so Whereas i if remember you had just me- like come in yeah normal yeah. done the least yeah. yes they did the most they yeah. did the most Literally. And also, can I just say, like, what a fucking nightmare to be in. Like, this stuff is terrible regardless. But when you're old, it's mm. like you've lived your whole yeah. life. Yeah. And they you're were just ready to chill. You know, for this to happen, for something so terrifying to happen to you when, like, you're old. Yeah. Like, I just, I can't imagine. Horrible. And it's, it's, it's the most. And, you know, Taylor was managed to keep his hands mostly clean and made Justin do a lot of the dirty work, especially with the dismembering of the bodies. But after they, they take care of that, he goes and like takes care of Selena. And it it's just sad because you read articles at that time while, while it was happening, while she, Selena was missing, there were some people that were like, is she in on this? Like her, her mom's dead. Like that sort of thing, all the speculation. And, she was not. She was a pawn in this incredibly ridiculous, elaborate, elaborate scheme. Out of, I mean, the whole Children of Thunder thing comes from a, a passage, and it's supposedly Sons of Thunder is the Bible passage. But He's because like, Don a little more progressive, yeah, yeah. being inclusive. Yeah, Don was there, so it's Children Diversity. of Thunder. Yeah, representation matters. Oh, Jesus. Yeah, so. Yeah, and um, as as for where was I? The dawn thing. They get they get arrested. They're f- figuring it out. They put the pieces together, so they mm-hmm. go to trial, and everyone's convicted. I think Dawn got the lightest sentence of all because they had the cult programmer right. and she testified against them. So she got like thirty eight years. Wow. Both of the brothers got death sentences. Oh wow. So Taylor is still on death row. Justin spent time in prison and really there's not a lot on it, but just from what I'm, I'm seeing, it looks like he really took it hard that he, Justin's the Jordan. No, Taylor is the Jordan. Okay. So Taylor, Taylor pled guilty and was like, yeah, "Yeah, I did that. And they sentenced him to death. (laughs) Justin's lawyers tried to say like, he lived under the shadow of his brother and like well, manipulated. I, I will say like 
I mean, by no means should he not have to suffer the consequences of his actions. He absolutely should. But like, I can't, I mean, his parents growing up in like a highly religious household Mm -hmm. where your parents are telling you like, yeah, this is, it's God's will essentially for you to do what your brother tells you to do. It would be tremendously difficult. Like it it would be really hard. And, and, And I'm by no means saying that like he shouldn't have been sentenced to what he was sentenced to. But I also do believe having grown up in a very religious world mm-hmm. i i could see that yeah. happening like yeah well it gets he he was in prison and he it i don't know if it was remorse or just the totality of everything or just being on death row in san quentin which sounds mm-hmm. fucking terrible yeah so he tries to commit suicide in like 2013 by using a pen to gouge his eyes out. Oh, oh that's my. not the way to do it. God. Whoa. Yeah, which blinds him and gives him brain damage. Oh, my Fun. God. Doesn't work. He lives through that first attempt. He was successful on his second attempt by hanging himself with a sheet. So Justin Helzer is no longer with us, but his brother Taylor is still on death row, which is... And there are a lot more details about the Children of Thunder thing. That is the most gruesome I decided to to share because it is a very wow. like Ooh, very intense yeah. story, like t-, t to B. And the the podcast episode, um, the it's a podcast podcast oh. cult is so. If you are Real in depth, it's very oh, that's interesting, very hmm. in depth. Mm-hmm. And so there's a lot more. They talk to um, a lot more people about um, the crime and a lot of stuff that's involved. But the thing that that stuck out to me was just like how terrible it is. Like this young, beautiful woman, Selena, who got really excited, met a guy at a party. Like, don't ignore those red signs, flags, right. yeah. those right. signs. If your your intuition will tell you if something mm-hmm. isn't right, and like you know, I not understand. knowing somebody's last name is a that's it's a, a big pretty one. big fucking red flag. It yeah. is. It's a big one. Yeah. I, I mean. I mean, I don't care how good looking you are. Yeah. And it's like, it's one thing if it's like, oh, okay. Like, whatever. It's like a one night it's stand. A yeah. It's a hookup. But if you're going to start dating yeah. somebody. Yeah. It's no. different. It's, it's different. got to be two sided. You can't. Yeah. You can't date somebody that's not going to give you their last name. No. It didn't even give her his real first name. I mean, yeah. I always, you know? you know, every time. We, and I just assume you're married. Yeah. Well, or yeah. Something. yeah. Absolutely. When we talk about tainted love stories, though, like it's it always just highlights to me how wild those feelings are, like how wild those feelings of love can be. Mm. Oh, yeah. That just make you abandon reality. Common sense. Yeah. yeah. Just like common sense reality. Because it's easy Oof. to look at it from the outside and be like, what? Oh, yeah. Moving in with somebody that you've only been dating for a couple of months, raising your hand here. Like, <laughs> yeah. you yeah. get lucky when it works out. You right. get unlucky when it doesn't, you know? And, and you just don't, like, you don't always know. But you know. knew Eric's last name before you moved in, right? I did. Okay. I did. Okay. I did have that going for did, me. You did. You actually already met his dad, I think, at yeah. this yes. point. Yeah. It, yeah. So there was that, which, yeah. is, which was good. But I mean, yeah. I mean, yeah, it's just like, those feelings are so strong and they're not always rational. Well, especially in your early 20s. Mm. Right. You got hormones and other things. Your frontal lobe isn't fully developed. Mm-hmm. You know, all of those things. But but yeah, I mean, it's just, it's, I, these stories always make me think that, like that it's just so wild mm-hmm. how somebody who is otherwise smart mm-hmm. and rational and like great in every other like aspect of their life can fall apart. Oh yeah, over over something like this, just because it it doesn't make sense. That's how whole like love is blind. I mean, thing. Yeah. it really it really is. What you have an excuse for for everything when you're head over heels. You're like, oh, you just excuse it away. Yeah. Mm-hmm. you know, yeah. Instead of really being very critical or you know, this is fine. This this yeah. is fine. It's fine. It's fine. He Ooh. doesn't need a last name. It's fine because yeah. he makes me feel good. Children yeah. of Thunder. Wow. Oh. It's 
Wooey Wowie. I had never heard of them. No, before. never heard Actually, any of this. So that 48 hours. Wow. I had seen, I don't know if it was the 48 hours, but I think it was like uh, ID did a show on cults or something, uh, but I had probably. seen it. Probably. Yeah. Um, and it is. Ugh, ugh, mm. ugh. Don't love it. It's not my favorite. No. I but I you're did not- love that you did that story. That yes. was great. You're yeah. not you're not going to take down the Mormons with Brazilian no. orphans. No. I'm just going to go out on a limb and say it's it's not it feels, not a great plan. It feels like a a very yeah. It feels like maybe plan. you didn't think it through. Yeah, entirely. like it feels like like maybe there yeah. was some missing pieces. Components. Yeah. yeah. Well, yeah. Key and you and I both kind of work in in project management. So like you take a big uh, big goal like that, you no. got you got to break it down. You work in your concrete way steps backwards. Yeah. We we've yeah. had this conversation. Mm-hmm. You 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 figure out what your goal is. <laughs> That's right. And then you figure out what steps need to be completed on your right. way to that goal. And then you work backwards, setting tasks and timelines. That's I how you accomplish. Feel it. like yeah. also doing a bunch of mushrooms and ecstasy Not whilst the way trying to do it. To come up with that said plan? No. May not. No. No, I you're like, like they- I got big ideas, man. <laughs> like, no. <laughs> I feel like it wasn't microdosing either. Like no, the kind no, that just no. Yeah, no. And also, I, I I think that this is part of why like LSD and mushrooms I can't. Because I'm like, it's also just such a huge time suck. Yeah. Because it's like if you do if you, you don't do get that back, you are gone for like eight to ten hours. Yeah. Yeah. Like your day is gone. Okay. You don't Lost have time. To plan no anything else, like you're just mm-hmm. it's you got to just be okay with the fact that like nothing's getting done today, right? <laughs> you yeah. know, yeah, yeah. Like, no. Woo. And I have such a shit memory. I need somebody there just to be what like did I say? transcript yes, for me. Yes, exactly. <laughs> like you just stay sober, and I'm just gonna give you a bunch of ideas. Well, you know what? I bet you his brother Jordan would have done that. Yeah. He's like I'm gonna go on a trip. Whatever I mumble, just write it down. Yep. And yep. we'll review when I come back to Earth. Mm-hmm. Okay. Oh my gosh. But yeah, I, I I didn't even know you can call it a cult because it was three people. <laughs> right? But I was just thinking that I'm like, where's the three. rest of them? But That's they a- they gave themselves a name, so I feel like yeah. that. But counts. they got but they got the orphans from Brazil. They didn't no, get that they far. Never, they didn't oh, get right. that far. They never made it. That's part of. The- they put it put it down on the to do on, on to do list. Mm-hmm. Yeah, never got that. They ever got that check yeah. mark in. Mm. Got it. Got to no. get it. Got it. And there's a bunch of other stuff too that they planned. Jeez. They planned. Another way for them to get money was for them to like run an escort service or something like that. Which is Dawn. <laughs> just I mean, Dawn alone. <laughs> it it's just is it's Yeah. Yeah. It's I think a plan that you come up with when you're doing a bunch of mushrooms with the backgrounds mm-hmm. that they they had. So yeah. yeah. Well, okay. Okie dokie. Okie Well, what are you guys well, watching? To be uh, in the spirit of radical transparency, we are recording this back to back. We had to do two because I am flying home to Ohio, whisking myself away to the the pleasant shores of of Galleon. Shores of the landlocked <laughs> state <laughs> of, of the, Ohio. Of Ohio. <laughs> Um, the so, Great Lake State. <laughs> so uh, we have not watched anything between recording one episode and the next. But is there any kind of media content that you guys want to talk about? To- well, I withheld a show okay. in the oh. last episode okay. specifically for this uh, purpose. Um, I did start watching Collateral, which is not the Tom Cruise movie. Uh, <laughs> which I looked anyway, directly I at. I didn't know. At I don't even know what that is. There's a Tom Cruise, Jamie movie. Fox movie called Collateral. Oh, yes, got it's it. not that. It's not that. Got it. But it's uh, a show, right? It's a show. Okay. There is, it's a limited series on Netflix with Carrie Mulligan. Yeah. And love her. Um, I love her. Just started it, only watched one episode, but so far so good. I nice. like it. It's it's a procedural kind of show, um, British pre- procedural. Perfect. And, um, I'm, I'm digging it so far. So yeah, noise, noise. Um, uh, not really anything. That's okay too. I did watch something that I wanted to talk about, and I can't place it. It's something you mentioned. Oh, it's the one with the, the Riverside. Oh yes. Uh, why did you kill me? Yes. Yes. I saw. Why did you kill me? Um, Christine, it's everything you. Uh, surmised from the uh, yeah I watched it you too. did watch it mm-hmm. okay mm-hmm. let's let's talk about it yeah chat about it a little bit <laughs> um it's underwhelming it's, it you know it 
It is. I I was underwhelmed because I'm like, you could have expanded. That's I right. want to know more about it. It could have been a series. It's actually only like an hour and a half long. Yeah. So it's. Did we tell our listeners what this is about? Why did you kill me? Is the story of um, a young girl who was in a car at the wrong place, wrong time, um, victim of a drive by shooting, and the mother decides to go on a campaign to uh, using her niece on MySpace to lure the killers into confessing, which sounds very like compelling. It it, it does. is, dude. But I'll tell you who's thing- the unsung hero of that piece is the niece yeah how much worse i was like she did child she did all she did all and she like killed herself to do it like she's i mean you can see very emotionally intelligent okay she's a baby she's like a a, like young like preteen having to pretend that she is her dead um Aunt, cousin, cousin right? yeah something cousin, right yeah mm-hmm. the thing is that here's what i i will say is that it i uh, besides the niece there's not many people to empathize with or feel or root for it. root yeah. for it. that's the heart you know like because it's it kind of like the more you open up the case the more you kind of find out like they were part of something that was also tied to this thing. And it kind of, I'm not saying anybody asked for it. Like that's not where I'm going with this, but it just feels like she was dead set on finding who these people were, but also they weren't willing to kind of own their own role in in Mm. what may have brought that demise to their doorstep. Right. That was interesting. Yeah. Yeah. So would you say, cause I had planned on it was an, it. it was an Should interesting watch, watch. It? It's an hour it and a half. It? I think, I think it's, it's worth it. Um, just it's, it's short. Um, but it's, it's definitely not yeah. my, you're not gonna write home about it. Yeah. It's not gonna go in your diary. Tonight. There are gonna be better true crime. Docs. Right. There's right. a yeah. lot out there right now. And I At think that that's maybe where I, why mm-hmm. I landed on, watching yeah. it but same yeah i same. mean because there's not a ton available right now so i think that listen it, it's fine it just the, it it's really hard minus like the actual victim and the the cousin it there's I'm not watch murdered by not the mormons to- instead uh, I watch yeah. that one. Kind of think want to watch yeah. that too. Yeah, you know, there there's, is a show that I want to watch on there's Netflix. There's an art one too. I saw mm-hmm. that one. Oh, yeah, of course I did. Yeah, um, there, <laughs> there's so- a show. I think it's in French. It's called Serpent. Have yes. you seen that yeah. one? Yeah, I I, I'm gonna watch that one. That's on my list of things but, to watch on is Netflix that a true as well. Crime? It it's based on a true okay. story, but yeah. it is a um, scripted show. Yes, so okay. like I'm, I kind of want to watch that one too. So there's things on my list. It's just yeah. been it's been really hard. When? It's but when yeah, and exactly. and in the time that I have, I mean, it's kind of the same thing. In the time that I have, how heavy do I really want to get? You know, like I could have been watching all of the Oscar nominated movies. And the only movie I've watched in the last two weeks is Godzilla vs. Kong. Oh. So that should tell yeah. you <laughs> about Ooh, where I'm you, at mentally. Where you are you know? watching the Oscars? Where? Mm-hmm. Um, I, I, we hadn't even discussed it. I yeah. haven't seen anything. So like, I've, I've I'll seen definitely it all. Be I'm watching. filling out my I'm, ballot. I'm going to watch it. Did you, uh, yeah. Who's doing the, someone is directing it. Is it Soderbergh? Somebody yes. is like directing the I think it's the Soderbergh. Oscars. Yes. Oh, well Because no I'm one intrigued. is allowed to, to be wear on a mask. Zoom. No one's allowed to be on Zoom. They're doing it all like. Oh, that's right. No Zoom. Like they're having um, bubbles in different cities, so mm-hmm. like they so that nobody kills Anthony Hopkins. You know, they they have a bubble. In, <laughs> oh my god, you definitely I <laughs> in heard... the UK, yeah, in in yeah. Daily Zeitgeist. That's what they yeah. said. Uh, but but that's exactly why is like yeah. they mm-hmm. don't want to have everyone in one place. But he also was like, I will only direct this if it's not on Zoom because everybody has Zoom fatigue. Yeah, I mean, but also I mean, but also true. But yeah. also fully fatigued by Zoom triggered can't can't play jackbox games no can't. no and i and they're fun but i've uh i it's well eric got uh the nintendo switch so i'm gonna be honest about my dorkery um we've been, <laughs> we've been obsessed with playing risk oh God. wait Girl. literally never played it i hear you I grew up, and my dad was a savage when it came to risk. You, you have, have to give be. a fuck that we were like six years no, old. you have uh, to be. He would be like, like, I'm coming for your shit. Literally yeah. wipe us off the you map. You have to be. That's how you have to play that game. Yeah. Take no prisoners. 
Dude, I am yeah. a champion at that game. That yeah. game like, unstoppable. But it lasts like five hours. Like yeah. Risk is like the longest game of all time. It's not it's not that bad when you're playing it like digitally. You don't have to do like the setup and stuff like that. It's it's been lasting us like an hour and a half, like right when on. we play or whatever. All right, but all right. I don't know why. You know, it's just we're towards the end of this thing. Yeah. We're you running out of done. things to do. There, so we're like a hundred. Risk. Wow. A hundred percent. Like I, I yeah. was just talking to Anthony about like the the various phases of quarantine we yes. went through, where it was yeah. like karaoke phase, hook up the old Wii and play Wii tennis phase. Oh yeah, yeah. like, like yeah. there have been so many phases of like Jackbox games, j- Jackbox games, and Zoom parties. That one yep. fizzled out very. Yeah, you know, playing Rummy until one of you gets mad and then you don't play Rummy for another three months. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. You know, mm-hmm. like just the various phases of like there's only two of us in this house how are we going to keep each other how, occupied yeah, yeah. <laughs> we're, we're i'm like i'm done with you know television for the most part there's nothing there's nothing else to do and so mm-hmm. yeah we've definitely gone through um but our different all, games but we're on risk right now we're all very near to fully vaxxed i'm fully yes. vaxxed christina I am you're too. fully vaxxed um cassie you've had your second Today. shot so you're close like we are we are almost there the end is in sight yes <sighs> keep Amen. it keep it together keep it together a mm, mm, little bit mm, longer we're almost just... there y'all so yeah. if you have stories because you're venturing out into the world <laughs> you've got those heels on girl you yes. are you looking look good snatched. you look fly, you are looking mm, hot. amazing hot going out on that date and then it turns out he has puppets in his car it's, but could be worse. In. but it could be worse it could be worse just saying Give Go us that story. to our one-stop shop of a website. It's myworstatepodcast.com. And we love you so much. Cheers. Cheers.